before I get started in today's video, you guys could see I am officially starting the part out of my FG2. I am, I am literally saving all the parts that I can utilize on my old engine or another K24, whatever I decide to go with. Let's get talking about what's gonna happen with this car, what insurance said, my decisions with the car, and everything is going to lead up to you know the final decision so i hope you guys enjoy this make sure you guys drop a like down below thank you thank you thank you for all the support in the last video guys it means a ton to me so let's dive in into today's video need to talk i can't thank you guys enough for all the support on the last video like seeing all you guys comment and you know engage in stuff like it's crazy to me that i could inspire and just make people watch videos like with a civic <laughs> like i honestly never i remember having 50 subscribers and I'm like, and I'm not saying I'm this huge million subscriber person right now either. So that's not, not coming off like that. But it's just crazy to think that I was able to reach a huge amount of people with just one little platform. As you guys know, Midnight's, Midnight's Down blew up randomly. Um, all, all that was in the last video. If you didn't see the last video, I'll put it up top here. Let's be real, guys. Yes. Could I have put a new motor in it? Absolutely. Um, I have the knowledge to do that. It's really not that expensive. A lot of you, a lot of you guys comment that just put the old K20 back in. Well, <clears throat> ideally that was the plan, but things changed a bit, and I'm gonna inform you guys all today on what's happening. Back like seven months ago, I hydro locked the engine in Massachusetts. Uh, dead end road it was a deep, deep puddle. Whatever. I took a chance, went through it. Car, car hydro locked. So got all the water out and I thought it was gonna be good. Well, 7,000 miles later, you know, this accident occurred. <coughs> was it stemmed? Was it stemmed from that? I don't know, nobody knows. And I'm gonna get into that. But the moral of the story is it blew up and we don't know why. Back when that whole hydro lock incident happened, um, I had, and I put a claim in with my insurance company. Now, smartest thing I've done for myself, and I think everybody should take advantage of this, even if you pay 20 or $30 more a month, get full coverage for your vehicle, guys. It literally covers anything. Is insurance always gonna work with you? Probably not, but in this case, I thought my situation was relatively, I think I made out pretty well. I had, I had called in that morning when my my Civic SI blew up. So I called in to my insurance and I said, hey, you know, I'm checking in on this claim number. They still had the claim open. Now the appraiser told me when the water damage happened, if anything happened down the road, this claim would never expire. <clears throat> so that's one thing I guess I had going for me. So pretty much what I did was I called back and I said, hey, you know, am I, am I good with this claim still? And, you know, he goes, he goes, yeah, well, it never expired, but whether or not it was caused from the water, we can't really say that. I mean, you drove this car for, they didn't know how many miles I drove it for. <coughs> so I went through the bosses, I went through the appraiser, everybody was just asking questions on what to do. And I was just kind of in the, in the shadows for like a week. Appraiser calls me back and tells me that an engine, a engine, the cheapest engine he found was like two grand plus shop cost. I mean, you're looking at like five grand, right? The car's not worth five grand. It's got 240K plus on the chassis <clears throat> and it's got just rough body and a rebuilt title. So that was out of the question, I already knew that. Um. The next thing he told me, the appraiser said, I got to come out, you know, check out the car, check out the damage, assess the value. And I said, okay, well, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen? He goes, well, <clears throat> we can deny this 
and you pretty much are left for nothing. Insurance comes out, praises the car. They lift it up, saw the hole in the bottom of the block. I still haven't even seen the hole yet. I gotta make a video on the damage. Um, sees the hole in the bottom of the block, threw a rod right through the block, and they needed to determine whether or not the water was gonna be the contributing factor to the issue. Only problem is to disassemble that motor and inspect each part individually would have costed four grand. The car wasn't worth four grand. So I'm out of a replacement engine. That's out of the question. That's five grand. And a teardown shop and out water damage analysis was going to be about three or four grand plus all that time. The car's not worth four grand. The car's not worth five grand. So I'm just throwing out a price for you guys. The payout, excuse me, I'm, I'm sick as a dog right now. I got like a sinus infection. Let's get out and walk and talk, guys. It is absolutely gorgeous out right now. <clears throat> Beautiful day. <coughs> so you know the car's not worth five grand, and you know the car's not worth four grand. The payout, no, I'm not gonna give you the exact number either, but it was under four grand. So <clears throat> let's just go down here and check this out. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at that view right there. I knew my options were very limited and so called me with all that information. Two days, he goes, he goes, let me talk to my boss, get some answers and everything. I'll call you back soon. Call me back two days and he goes, he goes, the appraiser goes, and this dude is the man. He used to be like a Honda head in Acura. He used to collect Acura Integras back in the day. So he goes, how much did you pay for your car? And I'm like, four grand back in 2016. He's like, <coughs> he's like, I'll be honest with you. He's like, you made out pretty well. And I'm like, what? Back on the path, guys. So anyways, yeah, he tells me, he's like, you made out pretty well. He's like, I'm not going to lie. So right then and there, I was my my mood went from from here. No, my mood went from down here to up here because I knew I wasn't gonna get something out of the accident. You know, obviously I wasn't gonna have a car, so that's screwed alone. Like I'm renting renting a car basically every other weekend right now, but that's adding up. So tells me they made a decision, they're gonna cover the vehicle, and I said, word. And I go how much is the vehicle worth? <clears throat> I thought it was like, I was guessing like 2,500 bucks. He said, if I didn't have a rebuilt title, it would have been over four grand. And I'm like, with the mileage and the paint and everything. So he told me a number and I almost like, I was just so excited. Now there's some disadvantage to this. So he goes, well, do you want to keep the car? And I'm like, what are the options? He's like, well, if we take the car, we'll pay you 330 for it. And I'm like, 330 bucks, that's what Scrap's going for. And I'm like, dude, I got more in parts. And he's like, I know. That's why I'm asking if you want to keep the car. So I said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got some stuff I'm taking off. I wanted the exhaust, I wanted to switch off the XXRs, and I want like my RBC and some sensors and stuff like that. So I did a calculation on all the parts that I, all the sensors and stuff on that car, and it's way more than 330. So <coughs> they took off fi a $500 deductible and 330 bucks from scrap off the appraised value. So I lost pretty much 830 right there. Not that big of a deal. I walked away keeping my car coming into the good old forerunner now here's here's the problem right and a lot of you guys already read the comments and stuff but obviously obviously i would keep this car but insurance didn't really give me a choice and i'm going to show you guys my title in a minute once i once i get back to the house but here's the thing so I decided to keep the car and I got a payout. <clears throat> they wanted to stamp it 
salvage parts only. And I'm like, well, that means I can't drive it on the road anymore. It's not going to be road worthy. So I kind of didn't really think about this stuff until afterwards. Here's the kicker. Like, I put so much time and effort into Midnight and stuff. And, you know, I really love that car pretty much. So <laughs> I, um, unfortunately, with the payout, payout and me keeping the car, <laughs> that's kind of insurance way of saying, well, we're going we're to make sure you can't drive it on the road. Now, I'm not saying that is basically what they were thinking, but, you know, usually it's never too good to be true, right? To get the car to drive back on the road again, guys, it would be way too much work. And I'm going to tell you why As people are going to, you're going to be like, dude, why'd you do that? You know, you could just slap a motor back in it, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, I could have slapped the motor in it, but here's the problem. The problem is I have... I have the EPS issue that's bad. EPS issue's bad, right? I have elect other little electrical issues, right? Here and there. The body is rusting like crazy. You know what I mean? And I'll show you guys a picture of what the body looks like when I get home. I just I don't want to deal with the EPS anymore, guys. It was it was getting to me and I don't really want to dump a lot of money into it. So I took the cash, I took the payout. So that's that's pretty much the moral of the story, guys. And it's it's the end of the chapter with that car, unfortunately. And I'm gonna miss the hell out of it, but I think I made out well. Now, also, <coughs> another thing is, I get to I'm gonna have a company come and pick up the car when I'm already when I'm done stripping it, and they're gonna pay me a settle a set price outright. So there is this title stamp. There's the salvage. That's the new stamp. That's the old one there. Pretty much can't drive this vehicle on the road anymore until it can pass an inspection, right? So that being said, guys, passing, getting this thing to pass inspection wouldn't be the uh, would be the best idea. So I have an electrical issue here, right? this light does not work right they're gonna they're gonna inspect this thing see these headlights don't even fit right they're gonna pick this thing apart guys eps lights on right <clears throat> they're they're gonna pick it apart look at like rust i just yes guys it's it's brought me a lot of good things but to me <clears throat> i don't think it's worth it i'm gonna miss midnight a lot but you know what at least I have another car. Now, if this process was, you know, if this process was different and I didn't have another SI, I would probably do my best to try to make sure it passed inspection and everything. But that's it. Every, you got the whole story there. Aside from showing you guys maybe a little more on the teardown and the hole in the back of the block and everything like that, this will be one of the last times you see this car on the channel. So I am sending my thanks to this car this thing has literally inspired me to film inspired me to meet other enthusiasts brought me up on my bad days my days that were down yeah, it's, this is more than just a car guys like the, the fun thrill getting behind the wheel of these things is something that i can't explain to you unless you have and, and own one of these or have driven one just wanted to show you guys a quick look at the cylinder head So even though I had water damage, it does not look bad at all. Like that head looks beautiful, guys. And remember, never stop wrenching.